what we've seen this year is just where the fragilities are um, in, in the South African economy. You know, when the rand tumbles, there's a lot of emotion around that, uh, almost as a symbol of the value of the currency and the value of the country. But by then, um, that's, a, that's almost a symptom or an outcome um, of fundamental things that have gone wrong. And usually things that have gone run over a very long period of time, even though we, we wake up to them uh, possibly when it's too late. So I think what is being revealed or what, the lesson that we should be taking away from this year and mistakes from um, years past is that we haven't really thought very deeply about the fundamentals of economic growth in South Africa and where those come from. Whether we have a sustainable model that talks to the next five years, 10 years, 40 years. We talk very superficially um, lately um, about the National Development Plan as a blueprint, but it doesn't quite tell us um, what are the fundamentals of South African economic growth. And we do need economic growth to tackle inequality, to tackle poverty, to tackle unemployment. But I would say inclusive growth, um, of course. I think that's a very important qualification. Now, if you had to think about themes, we can derive our economic growth from consumption and a consumer society, which was what we tried for many, many years. Um, and that didn't quite work out, as we've seen, because you also need to lift potential economic growth. And you might enjoy um, cyclical economic growth that you derive from boosting uh, wages and incomes through social welfare, through wage increases. But to lift the potential, investment has to come in at some point. And we, we lost focus of that. So we haven't been very good on terms of the investment-led uh, path, which is what we'll need to go to going forward. Now, there is a lot of rhetoric and narrative coming out of government to say we're actually going to experience the biggest investment um, expansion that we're going to see. Um, ESCOM and Transnet recently raised massive amounts of funds, despite you know, ESCOM's difficulties, um, to enhance their infrastructure development. And so that's where I think there's an opportunity, if it's used properly, um, to have growth that is sustainable, but that also means that going forward for the next 20, 30 years, we've created a strong foundation to un underpin that economic growth. Internationally, once again, what's our international strategy? We talk, once again, superficially about the rest of the African continent. And that certainly is where the opportunity is going to come from and has to come from, uh, just in terms of our own even ideals to develop along with the continent and to ensure that we have um, neighbors that, that, that are stable. But in reality, we have um, been become too excited about the Chinese um, economic um, story. You know, a few months ago um, at the NGC, if you read the documents, they were very much about an ascending China and a West that is becoming irrelevant. Now, the question is that it doesn't have to be an either or. You can actually try to optimize what you have from traditional trading partners, while of course not ignoring the biggest growth story that is going to happen um, over many years. But that growth story is not going to be perfect. China will hit roadblocks, and so we also have to have a, a sense of our own risk mitigation. If China is going to be, and it is already our largest trading partner, how do we ensure that when it encounters problems, we still have a balanced um, strategy of economic growth and trading partners that will ensure that we don't feel the effect in the same way that we have felt this year. So in terms of our growth strategy being investment focused, a balanced international strategy, and also having shock absorbers to ensure that when we do encounter difficulties, we're able to be resilient. Now for a long time, our fiscal policies were, were that shock absorber. In difficulties, we could say, we will spend our way out of this. And that's exactly what we did after the um, financial crisis. Um, government spending increased, government debt increased, for very good reason, but you do end up hitting a ceiling that we are at um, right about now, and the question becomes credibility that are we going to be able to maintain that financial stability, ensure social stability without losing um, our focus on underpinning our strong economic fundamentals.